Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today I just want to give you a quick demonstration of why I don't do AVX offsets for, for overclocking. So here we have the 10700K on the Z490 EOS Master. As you can see, I have it set to 5 GHz core, 4.6 GHz uh, ring, and zero, uh, zero AVX offset. So it's always going to run 5 GHz no matter what, unless it's thermal throttling or, you know, hitting some kind of safety mechanism. So um, we're going to save and reset. And there we go. Capture card's being stupid because I'm still on an NVIDIA GPU. Um, so yeah, here we are. And now we're just gonna run Cinebench R15. So Cinebench R15 doesn't use any AVX. Um, and then we're also gonna run Cinebench R20, which does use AVX. And I also want to have CPU Z open. So the way these are currently set up, is that, uh, well, so CPU-Z, we can look at our core frequency right there, and if you right-click on that, you can see all your different core frequencies. Um, and now the thing is, on mainstream Intel CPUs, uh, they can't do per-core ratios. So if you have an AVX offset, and there's one thread of AVX running anywhere in the system, it downclocks the entire CPU. Um, so obviously that's not going to happen right now because, well, I don't have AVX offset enabled, but we have custom number of threads, 14 threads, so we're going to have 14 threads running Cinebench R15, and, uh, this right here is set to run on one thread, so R20 is going to run on one thread, so we're just going to run them both at the same time. We're going to start R20 first because it's going to take longer, and we do have to wait for it to actually start rendering. And there it goes, it's rendering. We can still see that we have five gigahertz across all our cores. And then we run uh, the CPU on R15 and we can see, you know, we're still getting five gigahertz everywhere, which is what you'd expect. And R15 spits out a, core, a score of like 1938. We're just going to run it again. Um, you know, because there is some variance run to run. So we want to make sure that the score is somewhat stable. That it doesn't change too much. Nineteen forty four. I'm just going to do one one last run. Like, normally I would do three runs of Cinebench for any kind of sort of basic performance testing. If you're benchmarking Cinebench, rerunning it over and over again tends to inflate the score. Um, so, yeah, th th there's a pro tip. It's like if you're wondering how somebody is getting, like, five more points in Cinebench than you are, they might have just run it, like, 20 times. There, 1955 now. So we'll call that, it scores around like 1940 to 1950. So we're going to stop that render. We're going to stop this. We're going to close both. Um, and now we're going to restart and we're going to add an AVX offset to the mix. Now somebody's going to be like, oh, it's because you're using s fixed uh, CPU core ratio. Well, um... I mean, if we go into the advanced CPU settings, right, if I go, actually, no, well, there's really no, like, because here's the thing, you have, like, active turbo ratios, which you can enable, and then, you know, you have, like, how many cores active, um, and then you have per core hyper threading, nope, that's not what I wanted, um, yeah, and then you have turbo per core limit control. So this allows you to set um, a turbo ratio limit for a specific core. Um, so basically you can control which core triggers like the one core, two core, that kind of thing. But uh, you can't control um, the, like you don't actually get per core ratios. So anyway, um, I don't know why I have this in it. Well, 
hey, let, let's just have it enabled. I'm just going to set everything to 50, right? Everything to 50. Nope, that's 55. So all the cores are set to run 5 gigahertz. Um, and now we're going to throw a, I don't know, like off AVX offset of, uh, I want something significant so that it, you know, shows a decent performance. Uh, actually, no, even, even if we go to 1x, it should pick up. Cinebench is relatively sensitive. Um, the thing is, like, going from 5 gigahertz to 4.9 gigahertz is obviously like a 2% core clock decrease. So it's, it's not really, like, it's not going to drop our score on a... Like, instead of scoring, like, 1944, we should be scoring, like, 1900, or a little bit under 1800, uh, or high 1800s. So, like, 1890 or something. There we go. Let's start R20, and R15. No. There we go, and let's open CPU-Z. All right, R20 down there. 15 over here. And we have CPU Z up. And right now, all of our cores are 5 gigahertz. And sometimes they all drop down to 4.9. So now, if we run Cinebench R20 and it starts running. Yeah, so there we go. Now it's actually running. We can see it rendering. So now it's rendering, right? So everything is running at 4.9, even though we have one thread of AVX, and you might be like, oh, but if you if you run your known AVX workload, oh, 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 um, yeah, uh, <laughs> that, that's a real shame. <laughs> so, uh, and somebody might be like, wait, Buildzoid, didn't you have a bunch of, like, boost, uh, well, power management settings disabled? Good point. We should go re-enable those. Performance drop really isn't as significant as I was hoping it would be, mostly because AV, like, the thing is, it's 100 megahertz, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, but, yeah, so, you see, you can kind of see my point. It's just, like, your whole CPU slows down, but, admittedly, I should re-enable all the, the power-saving stuff, because that might be affecting it, but... Or more like, actually, it's not affecting it. It's just like somebody's going to be like, it's affecting it. So we're, we're going to re-enable all of that. I'm going to go advanced CPU settings. And I'm just going to put this all on auto. Um, yeah, and at this point, and of course, speed shift back to auto as well. And you know what? I'm going to crank that AVX offset. I'm set it to 3. Just because I actually wanted to make a proper performance drop at this point instead of nothing. So. Oh, and the capture card decided to work for once. How lovely. Um, so there's our R15. We're going to open up R20. We're going to open up CPU-Z. Right, so there's our R20, there's our CPU-Z. So right now we're at 4.7 because all of the power management stuff is now running. So if we go run uh, R15, we go all the way up to 5 gigahertz, right? It's great. The thing is, since we're not running R20 at the same time, the like it's going to score higher than even when I had the AVX offset uh, turned off just because there's nothing else running but Cinebench. So it can prioritize Cinebench performance. So now we get over 2,000 points. And uh, previously, if we had been running with, you know, the... With... Uh, actually, it's not just going down to... Th yeah, oh well. Let's try run this, right? So we're going to start R20. Which takes a while. And there we go. R20 is running. We can just see a sliver of the render over there. And now... Our entire freaking CPU is running 4.7 gigahertz. Like. It, the, the thing is. In my opinion. Why bother? 
with an AVX offset, if this is what it does, right? Like there, our, our performance absolutely cratered because there's an AVX offset running and it affects the entire CPU. Um, and so the thing is, is just like, like if your CPU can't do 5.1 gigahertz with AVX, then, you know, if you have one thread of AVX running anywhere on the system, the CPU is not going to run 5.1 gigahertz. It's really that simple. Like the chip is a five gigahertz CPU as soon as one thread of AVX shows up anywhere. And, you know, it might be your web browser. They, they update your web browser to take advantage of AVX acceleration for video decoding or something. You can't have a YouTube video playing in the background anymore because it'll slow your CPU down. You have like, so, so this is the thing is like, you never know where an AVX instruction is going to pop up. Um, I've heard apparently like Windows actually uses AVX uh, to some extent, like in and of itself at this point. And it's just like, yeah, so like if your CPU is actually just going to randomly not run at the frequency that you set it to, why even bother? Right? Like, run five, like, just don't use AVX offset, in my opinion. Because, yeah, you're, you're like, the chip is now at 4.7 gigahertz until, you know, our one AVX workload stops. So we're just going to stop that. Now it's back up to 5 gigahertz, but. Again, it's just like, do you really want to be constantly watching if, like, oh, I'm running an app that has AVX, so my CPU is way slower now? Like, that's dumb as hell, in my opinion. Alright, so now we're getting 2041. But if we set the AVX offset to zero, we can run Cinebench R20 and R15 at the same time and get, like, 1940, 1950 points. Um, and actually, if I have the AVX offset set to zero and we sin run Cinebench R15 alone, then it'll score, you know, 22,031 points as well. So, yeah, that, that's why I don't do AVX offsets. Um, it's just kind of like the chip is just going to randomly slow down when whenever an AVX instruction just randomly shows up somewhere, and then the whole chip is slow, so... Unless Intel, you know, implemented, like, actual per-core ratios um, instead of whatever it is that they have right now. Because th this is not, like, I guess we could try, it, like, one last thing, set that to auto. But in my experience, that isn't going to fix it. <laughs> and this is, you know, like, every single uh, mainstream platform for, like, LGA 1151, LGA 1200, this is the same behavior. As far as I know, none of these CPUs have true per-core ratios. That's an X299 thing. And I think X99 did it as well. Um, funnily enough, Phenom 2s have proper per-core ratios. Um, I think those are like the first CPUs which had proper per-core ratios. <laughs> which I just find really funny because they're so damn old. And it's like a new thing for X299 to have per-core overclocking. And then, no, X99 also did it. Yeah, with the 6950X, you could do per core. I remember that um, on some motherboards. But uh, yeah, so Phenom 2s. Phenom 2s already did that. Um, but uh, modern Intel mainstream CPUs? No, they, they, they still, still don't do this. So now if we run... Uh, oh, no. Yeah, so if we run this and this... And we look at our ratio frequencies. Wait, this isn't running. Damn it. There we go. Now this is running. Because it wasn't rendering. The thing is, when it's on the loading screen, it doesn't run any AVX until the render starts. So now if we start running... Yeah, there. 4.7 gigahertz on the entire CPU. And then if I stop this workload... Right? Like, if I just stop that, yep. Like, it'll go right back up to 5. But similarly, if a random AVX accelerated anything starts up anywhere, then you're just going to randomly lose a bunch of performance. So, yeah, um, that's it for this video. This is actually a pretty quick demonstration by, by my standards. So, yeah, AVX offset on mainstream Intel, kind of dumb. It, like, just, just run your CPU at whatever ratio it can run full AVX, because... 
Otherwise, you know, you open it like literally any random AVX instructions is just going to downclock the entire chip. Um, which, uh, yeah, I like, as far as I know, there's not really anything you can do about that. So, yeah, I guess uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but like, I, I, I've done... Well, I've not done this specifically on every motherboard, like this specific test, but I like have observed this similar behavior on every motherboard that has offered AVX offset except X299 because X299 has proper per core ratios where you can set every single sep like every individual core to a very specific clock speed. Um as far as I know, mainstream Intel has never supported that. So, yeah, um thanks for watching. And uh, that's it. Oh, right now, if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. That's how I how I got my hands on a 10700K. Thank you, patrons, very much for the CPU. Um, and uh, other than that, there's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Um, so yeah, there's a link to that down in the description below as well. And both of those help out immensely with running the channel. So yeah, um, that is now actually it for the video. So thank you for watching and goodbye.